The views, comments, and opinions of the following program do not necessarily reflect those of Morris Media Studios, MorrisMediaLive.com, or its affiliates. Listener discretion is advised. Green with crystals like folders, picking up momentum, rolling like boulders. They call me ice, but I'm really much colder. My rhymes is heavy like the weight on my shoulders. I'm spitting that red hot smoldering lava. I fight to the end like the Navajo. Crack a bottle though, make it the goose with cranberry and triple sec. Triple my check, I feel the ripple effect of a fool on the loose. I hit you from every angle, from obtuse to right. Street shit like JJ, I'm dying. Ain't no might, slide me some dough, I show you an execution in the flesh, and promise not to leave nothing left, if you vomit I keep stabbing, shooting, damaging, looting, till it ain't no disputing who the greatest is, is. da 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 what's up party people, yeah, just hit me, what's up party people, thanks for joining Mike Robinson Boulevard, I got a nice special Dope show for you guys tonight. Yes, 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 yes. How's it going, party people? What's up? We got Portis in the house. How's it going, Portis? Woo, woo. Ray, Ray, raise the roof. Ray, 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 raise the roof. All right, man. You know what? I'm not even going to play with you guys, man. I'm going to get straight into it because at the end of this hour, you're going to wish we had more minutes. That's how we do it in the place to be on Mike Robinson Boulevard. So first up, coming to the show. I lost my voice right there. First up, coming to the show. You can hear me there? No, but you can hear me? Oh, yeah, I was hearing myself. Never mind. First up, coming to the show. Um, we got a very, very, very special guest calling in on the phone today. He's a poet, a journalist, a blogger. Civil and human rights activist, public speaker, filmmaker, former two-time candidate for U.S. State Congress in New York, and an author of 14 books. And that's right off the bio, which I really didn't have to read because I've been following this cat forever. Give it up for Kevin Powell. Hey, hey, how are you? What's up, bro? Great to hear your voice. Great to hear your voice. How you doing, dog? How's everything? I'm good. I was actually just there in L.A. I wish I could have stayed a little longer. Oh, man. Well, you just missed our little cold front, man. Winds coming off the mountains and everything. I think you left at the right time. Yeah, I had a good time. I mean, that was my first trip since March. I was actually out there back in February, March, but the Kobe Bryant Memorial for these things. I love California. Oh. oh, man. Rest in peace to Kobe, man. This was your first time trip. Oh, sorry to cut you off. What'd you say? No, no, I'm, I'm sorry. You're right in. I was just going to say, is this your first trip during the pandemic? No, right? No, it was my first time on a plane since March. I'm usually on a plane a couple times a month, so it's, it's been um, it's been deep. And, you know, New York City got hit first the hardest and back in April, and uh, March and April and May. It was really very, very heavy here. And so, but I need to get out there for some business, and I just need to get out there. And, um, I was careful, very careful, careful as I could be, but... um. You know, you just, just something about California, you know. It's, it's oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah. I do know. <laughs> well, look, man, I know we uh, don't really have a lot of time tonight, so I want to just jump right into it, man. Um, first things yeah, first sure. is I want to give you props. I want to um, definitely um, speak on all the things you've been doing, in my opinion, for our people, also for hip hop. Um, also for the sisters, um, I first became aware of you way back in the day. You know, I'm an old man and all that good stuff. Um, when, on your first appearance on the very first reality show ever on MTV, um, you were on that first season, you know what I mean? And, uh, I was so proud of how you got down. I never forgot it because you really introduced this idea of having these intelligent, well, they use the word woke now, but these conversations around non-black people to enlighten them. You know what I mean? Well, all praises to the God, but I just, um, I mean, it started in, before uh, 
the whole MTV vibe stuff was uh, I went to college with um, Sister Soldier, you know, um, before she was even Sister Soldier. And so what? You know, yeah, we went to college together, and we were all student leaders. In fact, I worked with a lot of students from LA, from from UCLA, their whole historic black student union. We used to work with students around the country. So really. I mean, it, it was very similar to where we are now with, with Trump. With the, and, you know, you remember the Reagan years were crazy with crack and AIDS and everything mm-hmm. happening. But, you know, just the same kind of stuff happening, voter suppression, the, the killing of black people, you know, by police. And this, it was a lot of stuff that just kind of woke me up. Jesse Jackson running for president and all that kind of stuff. So by the time I got to the MTV show, you know, I, I was still in my early 20s, but I was very... You're right. We didn't say woke back then. We said conscious. You know right. It was conscious. There you go. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like we would say conscious hip hop or whatever. But um, I just knew. I didn't. You know, I just knew. And it was deep that year '92. I mean, you know, people remember that was the year of the L.A. rebellion. Yep. There was a lot of stuff going on. Mm-hmm. And you know, um, we were coming out of the Reagan 12 years of Reagan and Bush and Bill Clinton was running for president. So. I just spoke my mind, man. That's what I can really say. I, I said what I felt as a black man, and I feel, I mean, it was interesting you bring it up because people have hit me up this year when Black Lives Matter exploded, and they said, you know, you said race, racism is race plus power. You were right. I actually have had white folks and black folks and other folks say to me, quote back to me stuff I said on the show that I had even forgotten, and it was deep, but that shows the power of, of media, as you well know, hosting this show. Wow. And and I think people remember it being, you know, for a lot. Like I went to Morehouse, you know what I mean. So this was a nightly thing for us playing spades or whatever, you know what I mean. We go in back You're then. Yeah, yep, yep. I graduated in nineteen ninety, man. So I was right ar- up in that era. You must know, um, Fredon Wilkins, Jeffrey Akbar, all those brothers. Do you know them? Who say that again? Fredon Wilkins, Jeffrey. Are, are you? Oh Fanon yeah, 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 yeah. I know Fredon. Okay, you're from L.A. originally. Yep, I'm right? from L.A., yep. Man, there's a lot of y'all from California who went to Morehouse. That's what's up. I Man, yeah, yeah. We were, you know, the California club was the biggest club out of the, out there outside of Georgia. Is so that we, right? Yeah, that. we wow. were deep, man. It, but it's not just L.A., it's Oakland cast, too. Wow. Yeah. Wow, wow. I tell you, um, Morehouse um, has produced a lot of great brothers, man. It's just, you know, it... it much props there. I've, I've spoken there quite a few times. I always enjoyed my visit to Morehouse, to the house. To the yeah, house. yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're all in mourning right now because there was no homecoming this year, so. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. I mean, let us pray that, um, you know, we can get back to some, well, we don't even know what normal is, but whatever the new normal would be, let's, let's pray that we can get there soon enough. I just, man, I've lost so many people this year between COVID, the effects of COVID, you know, uh, one brother to suicide recently, just praying for Wow. Yeah. yeah. It's been deep, brother. Yeah, New York, like you said, you guys got it on the front end, man, and uh, it was looking good for a minute there, but then it's just starting to spike again, man. Yeah, you know, I mean, the problem to me is obviously the national leadership. It's like when you guys national leadership doesn't even want to wear a mask. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right. Telling people, you know, at a rally afterwards, I can I feel good. I can kiss. I want to kiss everybody. I mean, man, this is it. You know, and as Dr. Fauci said, you know, people just wear their masks and social distance and just wash their hands. It's basic stuff. It's not even even asking people. But I think part of the problem is that when you allow states to do their own, 50 states to do 50 different things, that's where we're in trouble. And people cross the state lines, and you know, I mean, and it's hard, man. It's just, Hard, and I think part of the culture that we live in is, is, is a lack of patience with a lot of folks. And I just think that, you know, it has, but if the leadership is not serious, then the people are not going to be serious. And that's what, what we've been dealing with. Exactly. And I, I tell you, I've talked to people all over the world, man. I've traveled, this is a, you know, I'm used to traveling there and travel out of the country every year, you know. And I knew it was serious when they said we were, we as Americans were being banned from all these different countries. I was like, crazy. man, exactly. We think we're over here banning them. They're banning us. <laughs> <laughs> because we can't be trusted. Then, meanwhile, our neighbors to the north, Canada, they're good. They got it flattened. They got the curve flattened. You know what I'm saying? So, right. It's, um, you know, it's a very, um, 
serious, 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 serious thing happened. None of us have ever experienced it. Obviously, it's the first time there's been a pandemic like this in 100 years. But, I mean, for me, the lessons are, I mean, especially when you see it's disproportionately affecting black and brown people, you know, um, we just got to be careful. I, I uh, work with the mayor's office here in New York City where I'm based. I directed a series of commercials, uh, spots um, around COVID awareness. And it, it, it's, it's, it's just trying to get the word out, you know, for folks to be careful because we know what AIDS did to us back in the day. And I feel like the same kind of thing where AIDS started off as one thing and all of a sudden it just hit our communities in a, in a very harsh way. And, and I don't think we ever really fully recovered from what AIDS and cracked into us a lot of our communities. Right, right. Yeah. <clears throat> exactly. Um, and you said the right word where we have leadership that's not taking it seriously because that's really what it all – comes down to and the thing is you can't even really expect that from this guy who we were talking about reality shows you being on the first one but this guy really all his claim to fame is man is being on his own reality show man the, the apprentice man well i mean this is i mean can you imagine a black man coming going literally from a TV show <laughs> being president of the United States. I mean, just think about that. Can you that. imagine? No qualifications, no qualifications whatsoever. You know, several, six or seven bankruptcies with his business. Right. Inherited his father's money, not like he made the money on his own. Right. And, you know, um, in, in, in any community anywhere, they're not in New York. I'm in New York. We know that for a fact. He's, he's always been this kind of problematic figure, you know, and egomaniac. And just to see this person descend, uh, ascend to the, to the White House says a lot about the state of the country, about uh, his appeals to white supremacy and those kind of voters that, that, that you know, that thinly veiled, not really thinly veiled at all. It's just a blatant racism, just supporting white nationalism, like he speaks to them. Like when he said in the first debate, the shout out to the Proud Boys, I mean, he told you straight up where he is. I mean, yeah. he, he was a couple years ago when there was the whole protest with the white supremacists and in Virginia, and, 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 you know, and said that they were nice people. I was like, you seriously? Man. This is who the president of the United States is, you know? He means it, though, man. People want to act like he just says things for the sake of, uh, you know, speaking, but I, in my opinion, he means it. Yeah. That's how I'm yeah, looking at it. Of course he does. I mean, I mean, because he believes in white supremacy, so does Mike Pence, and so do all the people around him. And the tragedy of this this year is watching black folks, you know, unwittingly, foolishly, ignorantly, misinformed, you know, support him as well. And it, it's just, you know, it's just, this is not the country that it claims to be because it's not really about democracy for all people. I mean, we've seen what happened with Brown and Breonna Taylor, the shooting of her in her own home. Obviously, that tragic video watching what happened to George Floyd. Cool. You know, eight minutes and 46 seconds of a black man being need to death mm, by a mm, white man. Mm. I mean, imagine if they had social media when we were being hung from trees. That's essentially what we were watching when we watched George Floyd. Right. And, right. You know, it's the same thing. It's the same thing because, you know, we see the photos from 100 years ago of those white folks standing around the black man hanging from a rope. You know? Yeah, man, with little kids and everything, women, children. Exactly. Bringing out their little picnic baskets and stuff, putting a little blanket down, man, making a day out of it. I mean, think about it. I mean, when you think about how black folks ended up in California, where they, how they ended up in New York City, where I'm at, a lot of it was for us to escape the vicious, ugly racism of the South. Right. My family's from South Carolina, and we know the migration patterns. If you're in California, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of folks came from Mississippi or Alabama mm -hmm. or Texas. Mm -hmm. Like my mom's, yep. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Where I'm at is South Carolina, the Carolinas, it's Virginia, it's Florida, you know, Georgia. And, and so, but then here we are in L.A. and New York. New York, you know, Eric Garner gets chokehold to death on video. You right. know, in L.A., everything from Rodney King to other stuff that's happened. Yeah, you know, new stuff, the, exactly. The racism is everywhere, you know, because the problem is that this country was founded on systemic racism, as we well know, and the notion that white folks are superior and black folks are inferior, and thus we've been treated like that. And, you know, you and I both know it through blackness who went to college, 
that we were told from the very beginning that we had to work two, three, four, five times harder. Right. You know, just to be able to do certain things in this mm-hmm. country because of how ugly the racism is. And you and I both know mm-hmm. that we are both intellectually superior to a Donald Trump. And that we've met many Donald Trumps in our lifetime, but they get to go to certain spaces because of white skin privilege. That's, That's right. Line. That's right. You know, bottom but line. I think what it's I think what has happened in this last couple of years for white Americans who did not vote for Donald Trump, because we know about 65 million voted for him, but 65 million also voted for uh, a little bit more, two million more voted for uh, Hillary Clinton. They realize, one, Trump is the president. He's a monster. You know, they realize that they are being treated like the others as well, because all he cares about is half the country. He, he just needs his base. And then when COVID hit and you see the disparities in the healthcare system, and then I think that George Floyd video especially. Mm, mm, I mean, you mm. see the mass outpouring of Black Lives Matter rallies from L.A. to New York. You know, a lot of white folks all of a sudden are like, wait a minute, what is going on with this country? I mean, I mean, the reality is they should have been woke. I'm like, the question is, well, for who? <laughs> right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, there would not be a need for your, your alma mater, Morehouse College, if we were actually allowed to go to black, to white school, quote unquote, white schools back in the day, but we needed more house in Spelman and Tuskegee and all these black schools because we, were, we, were, we weren't even allowed in their schools to get an education, you know what I'm saying? And so, you know, it's always been this way for us, but there's been an awakening with these white folks, but the challenge to them, which I'm writing about uh, in the next couple of days, is what are you going to do when the, when the, you know, uh, the cameras are off? Or what if Joe Biden and Kamala Harris actually win next week and no more Black Lives Matter rallies, no more supporting that? Right. You know, right. no more wanting to go to Eskimo books there in, in Lamert Park, no more wanting to read black books and read right. black yeah. history. And, yeah. You know, are you going to go back to business as usual? Or are you serious about changing this system the way we've been for 400 years? Yeah, because I feel like, man, during election time, people put in one good quarter, man. That's about it. One good quarter of raising some hell, and then, you know, it's the second week of Jan- of November, everybody's right back to their regular life again. I mean, it's got to become a part of the value system here. You know, it's like if you, go to, if you look at the country slash continent of Australia, they got 70, 80% of their, vote, their population voting on a consistent basis. Where I live in New York City, like say when we have our mayoral race next year, we're lucky if 30% of the people who are eligible voters actually vote. That's across the country like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. We know the only time that the numbers actually go up is during a presidential election year. But even there, it's still not with the, we got over 300 million people. And, you know, say, you know, the vast majority, uh, a good chunk of them are 18 and over. Mm-hmm. Well, they're still not, are just not voting. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? They're just not doing it. That's well, the problem. They just, Mm-hmm. What do you think that is? Um, you know, there's so much, so much discussions about this and people saying, should I even vote? My vote doesn't matter. Uh, there's all this t- kind of talk happening right now. What do you think about that? Why are people sitting it out? Well, let me, let me say this, first of all. Um, I vote in every election. I'm, I've voted. My mother, I've I got a blog on the Washington Post today, this week, right now, that people can look up about you know, my mother voted, and therefore I have to vote as well. I can't, I can't not vote because I was raised to. Because my mother told me the stories of what she experienced and her family experienced in South Carolina, and how they had all their basic rights denied to them. You know, and and, mm-hmm. and how she didn't even get to vote until she, you know, into the seventies. You know, what I'm saying we're talking about the voting civil rights bill came out in '64, mm-hmm. and the Voting Rights Act happened in '65. But you know, it's not like these laws really were applied all across the board immediately. I think. But I don't like it when people say, you know, if you don't vote, you know, you're giving away your power, you don't have a voice. I don't think we should guilt trip people into voting. I don't think we should diss people because they choose not to vote. Mm-hmm. I actually understand because, I, you know, I was a political science major in college. I also worked on many political campaigns, including Reverend Jackson's campaign, Jesse Jackson's campaign back in the day. Brought on up to Barack Obama's campaign in 2008, and I also ran for Congress myself in New York in 2008, 2010. And the number one thing. All you politicians are the same. And mm-hmm. so there was just a couple people who would have said that. I've been like, nah, they tripping. But when it was white, black, Latinx, Asian, younger, old, straight, queer, all kinds of people saying that, that says to me that there's a, a, a disconnect between the political system and the people. And the problem is actually not the people, it's the political system, which is why people 
choose not to vote. In other mm-hmm. words, I think there should be term limits. I don't think someone should be able to be in office in the California State Assembly or the United States Congress, the United States Senate, forever. Just like I don't think Supreme Court justices, justices should be there for life. Right. If we can have term limits for the United States, it should be term limits for everyone. It ends up happening. We're not going to say any names. We're going to be congresspersons forever, U.S. senators forever. And as a result, you know, I think their ideas get stale or they, they, or they, turn, they turn it into a family business. They call it into a political in their circle. And that's part of the problem why people are turned off by voting. I think yeah. the, the flip side of it, though, hey, hey, Kev. people. Kevin. Yeah. Hey, it's kind of hard to hear you there, right there. Can you just back yeah. up can about? You hear me then? Can you back up a few seconds? Yes. Yeah. Yes. yeah, yeah. Can you hear me Sorry now? about that. Yeah, that's better. So I was saying, I think that you know people are just are just becoming apathetic about voting because they feel like nothing changes. They see the same people off the road already, and they feel like people are using it either for family business or for the trends, that kind of thing. But the flip side of it is, don't vote in every single election. That means that certain people get to be judges, that's, you know, uh, district attorneys, mayors, city council people, alder people. It means that certain states have governors who are are Republicans that that don't have the best interests of the whole country, just certain people, because these Republicans that we're talking about over the last 40 years since Reagan got in office are very different than the white D. Eisenhower type of Republican back in the day. That's just the reality. And we know when people don't vote on a consistent basis, that means that when someone comes along to be put on the Supreme Court, like Donald Trump just did with this new Justice Barrett, Coney Barrett, right. it means the Republicans control the Senate, which means they could push her through with no problem. And now the Supreme Court is 6-3 in terms of conservative judges versus so-called liberal judges, which means that voting rights is now in trouble and a whole bunch of other stuff is in trouble, abortion rights, all of it. You know, that will affect a lot of us for generations to come. This is where we are when people don't vote on a consistent basis. Right, 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 right. And then when I have the nerve to complain, man. Then when I have the nerve to complain. Um, what, what else did I want to ask you? You have a, uh, a new book, right? What's your most recent book? It's called When We Free the World. It's when my, We Free the World. It's, yeah. Exactly. It's, it's out on Amazon right now. Um, but it also, it's about the country. It's about the country. I'm not saying that people can be playing uh, action steps. Like, I believe that we need to warn, know what's happening, be informed about current events, be informed, know history. You know, we need to have some idea about the community we live in. Like, if I live in Brooklyn, which I do in New York City, I have to know Brooklyn. I know my community. You know, mm-hmm. I know the history of my community. Mm-hmm. I know the people in my community. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I do think that we need to know stuff. We need to vote in a consistent basis. But voting by itself is not it. I think one of the mistakes that we've made is that we leave out a third part of it. No, K-N-O-W, vote, number two. And the third piece is organize, organize, organize. Do something in your community. Yeah. I, think I mean, think about your Morehouse uh, uh, brother, my alpha brother, Dr. King. He helped to get the Voting Rights Act pushed in 1965. Well, he lived three more years. What did he do for the last three years of his life? He organized. He started talking about poverty, about the poor people's campaign. Why did he start doing that? Because out there in L.A. County in 1965, the Watts Rebellion happened. Dr. King came out there to try to help the poor people. Folks were yelling at Dr. King, cursing him. Get out of here, Dr. King. We don't, we, don't, we don't want to hear what you got to say. And Dr. King realized that he didn't know anything about an urban environment. So what did he do in 66? He moves to Chicago with his wife in the west side of Chicago, to, 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 in the heart of the poor community, to, to put a spotlight because of who he was as a Nobel Peace Prize winner around poverty. Mm-hmm. But what did he do then in 67? Vietnam War. He comes out against the Vietnam War. He says that we're sending poor blacks and poor whites to fight poor yellow people in Vietnam. All of that culminated in him working with those sanitation workers in Memphis, Tennessee, and Tennessee, where he, in, in 1968, where he got killed. And he was organizing a poor people's campaign because he realized it's not just voting. Where's the economic power at? Where's the, where where are all these other parts of the pie that we right, need to people? Right. And so what I'm saying, with all due respect to your listeners and people out there, someone told us that voting was it or the main thing and left out you know what's going on, K N O W number one, number two vote, and number three, you have to organize. It has to be all three. All three. Otherwise mm-hmm. we get 
we get stuck. We get stuck. Because get I remember stuck. when Obama was running, man, the world was out there on the streets, man. People knocking on doors, making phone calls, doing donations, hosting events, all type of stuff, man. Friends and people you don't know, everybody was pushing. After he won, though, everybody stopped and that's, said, and said, hey, you true. know, now it's your turn. Like, no, that's not how it works, man. That's not how it works. Uh, that's exactly what I'm talking about because we, we, we've we also got to get out of this mindset of looking for a savior. Like, we saw Barack Obama, just like we saw Dr. King and Malcolm X and other folks as saviors. And the reality is you have to do the work, you know, Barack's job was to be president of the United States. He wasn't elected to be president of hip hop America or right. America. Right. He was elected. And so we should, it's just like, you know, it's like the, you, you, the leadership we are looking for is right in the mirror. And we keep looking, looking yeah. outside hmm. ourselves. And that's something else we got to get out of, which is someone else is going to do it. No, we have to do it. Right in the mirror. I love that. I love it, man. And this concept of, when we free the world, right? I've had these discussions on my show where we debate, are we free or not? And I'm someone who thinks we are free, and many folks have argued against it. But talk about that concept. What's from your standpoint? Freedom, well, <laughs> I mean, you know, if I can walk out of my home tonight here in New York City, or you can walk out of that studio tonight in mm -hmm. Los Angeles mm -hmm. and get pulled over simply because you're a black person walking or driving or burning, um, are you really free? That's the question. You know, was George Floyd free as he was sitting under the knee, literally, laying on the ground face down under the knee, literally, of that white police officer who, only, who with no emotions whatsoever, just knees him to death? I mean... Right. You know, and this man, this man, George Floyd's a man in his 40s calling for his mama. I mean, think about that for a second. Right. In 2020, in 2020, this man was calling for his mother. You know what I mean? Uh, I mean, are things better than what they were, than what my mother described when she was growing up? Yes and no. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know, there are opportunities that I have. I'm a first-generation college student. My mother has a grade school education. My grandmother, my mother's mother, I don't know my father's family, my mother's mother, could not read or write. I got 14 books, so I can't lie and say there has not been progress. But the harsh reality is when my mother is worried about me in 2020, mm -hmm. as if it's 1950 right. or 1940-something when she was born, and my safety, simply because I'm a black person, a black man in this country, no, absolutely not. We're not completely free because we don't even have the freedom to live without fear of being killed unnecessarily. I feel you, man. I feel you. Um, this other thing is uh, this this election right now, you know, is really one of the most important ones to come around in a long time because a lot's at stake right now. Um, can you talk about that? I'm sorry. Can you repeat the question? Sir? Yeah, I, I'm thinking about this election right now, just to, to piggyback yeah. on what you're saying. Like, there's a lot on at stake this time. Uh, you know, every time there's a lot at stake. But it seems like this time it's a little different because really we're fighting for, you know, um, are we going to have a democracy or not anymore, you know? Well, and, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm not. Yo. Did I lose you? I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, you kind of just went in and out. I got you, though. I hear you. No, I, I was saying, I was saying, pardon me for cutting you off. I apologize. Oh, no problem. I just wanted to know what you thought about the importance in this uh, of the election right now. Like, what's at stake? Well, I mean, it, it's trem tre tremendously important. Let's look at it like this: If Joe Biden and Kamala Harris win, then we at least can say we'll be able to, I hope, in the next four years, even now, balance out the Supreme Court again. Right now, it's six to three in favor of very conservative judges. However, if Donald Trump and Mike Pence win, re win re-election, it's very possible that the Supreme Court could be, in four years, nine conservative judges completely. Nine judges. Right. And, which means, think about all the laws that have been put in place to help black people, 
Latinx people, people of color, women, poor people, voting rights, you know, marriage equality for the LGBT, LGBTQ plus community. We can go through the list of things mm-hmm. that will be vulnerable, you know, to the whims of the Supreme Court if the, the, the Trump administration gets in power again. If the Trump administration gets in power again, think about what's, what's going to happen to the economy. The gap between the super, super wealthy and the rest of us will continue to grow. You know, think about the hatred, violence, division, the fears, the fire of all those things that will be, uh, the, the flames will be fanned even more so. And people who are already white supremacist, racist, will be even more emboldened to do even more heinous things to people. I mean, look at the fact that it was a plot was stopped to, to kidnap the governor of Michigan. Man, a few weeks ago. right. You know what I mean? Right. I mean, I think that if Donald Trump gets reelected, it will it will set this country back at least a year. It is not more. At least what? Can you say that again? Can you say that again? I I said if Donald Trump gets reelected, I feel in my bones it will set this country back at least 50 years, if not more. Whew. We're talking about policies, laws, uh, uh, the number of judges that will get appointed, more judges that will get appointed at every level around the country. Oh, man. Um, we're talking about the, the level of hatred amongst people that will be spread and encouraged. You're talking about more and more violence towards people who are right. different. Right. You know, voter voter uh, suppression. All of it. All that all stuff, it, man. It. And it's not to put fear in people, but basically we, we will fully, I believe, return to the America that my mother was born into in 1943. That's what we're talking about. Well, that's making it great again, right? According to them. <laughs> right. you know, that, means making it, that means making it completely white supremacist. That's right. what it's about. That's what it's about, man. Wow. I tell you, man, it, it gets deep, and we have a chance to do something about it. You know what I mean? Uh, we definitely have a chance. Let me uh, let me ask you about, um, I know we, we probably passed our time real quick. I want to at least talk about some hip-hop for a second. Um, are you following the versus battles? Oh, yeah, I have been. I have been. I see Diddy's asking for a challenger. I see that happening. Diddy yeah. is asking for a challenger. You saw that, right? <laughs> I did. I did. Who can go I up did. against Diddy? I mean, he's... he. It, the thing that comes into play is everything he produced, everything from Bad Boy. I mean, you know, he's kind of got a lot. I don't know who really could. He don't really have a Jermaine lot of competition. Dupree. Yeah, Jermaine, Jermaine Dupree. Dupree. Dr. Dre. Here's a few folks. <laughs> <laughs> DJ Quick. I'm going to bring it to West Coast, folks. There's some great producers out of the West Coast that can go up against them for sure. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know, I, yeah, but I mean, I think the, the verses is probably that. And D Nice and all the DJs that have come out this year and really learned a lot of We needed it to get through this, you know. Right. Um, I mean, this has been a, a, a mentally. I mean, we've never experienced anything like this. I mean, the thing like people are always asking, well, what about nine eleven? Yep. I mean, as a New Yorker, that had an impact. But the thing, the difference between nine eleven and COVID, nine eleven, it just really affected a certain part of New York City. You know, the whole country was concerned about it. This literally means that we can't leave where we are, most of us, for the most, of the, most of the time that this is happening. You know? Right. And even when I was on the plane, I'm not going to lie, I, you know, it was hectic going through JFK and then landing at LAX and with all the people. And, you know, you're, 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 you're just praying for the best because this, this is something that we can't even, you know, you know, do you get it from rubbing your fingers in your eyes? Do you inhale stuff? Can you go outside? Can you, can you, you know, what can you, you know, it's it's overwhelming, and so we've needed verses, we've needed music, we've needed. I mean, you know, you see how many people are watching Netflix, Hulu, and Amazon right. nonstop. I mean, right. we're just trying to. I mean, brother, there's not a day that goes by I'm not playing music. I'm eagerly waiting for Kendrick Lamar to come back out. I need, I just need music, man. Nonstop. Man, we need that, Kendrick. <laughs> we need that. <laughs> That's right. That's we right. need that, man. Wow, bro. Yeah. Well, look, man, I really appreciate you calling in, man, for real, honestly. Uh, when you're in L.A., i love for you to come in the studio and we could really chop it up and dig in. Um, but I really respect uh, what you've done all these years. You um, have, you know, um, carved out a great lane for yourself and for many, 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 many others. And, um, you know, it's just uh, a pleasure. You know what I mean? All praise is due to God, and I want to definitely shout out Sister Poet Poet just for um, asking me to do your show, the show tonight. Uh, it's an honor, and um, 
I just I just I'm just a servant, sir. I just care about our our communities and, and the state of this world. That's all it really is. That's all it's about, right? Yeah. Um, I appreciate it. Uh, why don't you tell the folks where they can find you? Well, I'm on Instagram and Facebook, Kevin Kevin Powell in Brooklyn. Kevin Powell in Brooklyn for both Instagram and Facebook. And again, y'all can check out my new book, When We Free the World, right on Amazon. Um, please, there's a lot there about. It's a short book, but it covers a lot of territory about where we are in this country, a little bit about our history and where I hope we could go. So I mean, because we do have to have hope. You know, we have to have hope no matter what. We got to keep pushing. That's right. That's right. Yeah. That keeps you alive, man, in my opinion. You know what I mean? This idea about what can be better tomorrow keeps you alive. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Okay, All cool, right. man. Well, well, thanks a lot, my brother, man. Um, again, uh, we will be checking for you next time you in L.A., bro. All right. appreciate you. all have a blessed night. Thank you so much. All right. Cool, dog. Thanks, man. All Holla. Right. All right. Give it up for Mr. Kevin Powell. That was great, man. We we never met in, in pub, I mean, in person or anything, but dude is a, is a cool cat, man. I can tell. Thanks for hooking that up too, Poetis. Poetis knows everybody, by the way. If people don't know, everybody, everybody. And I was impressed when I looked at his bio, and he has fourteen books. I was like, dang, you've been really getting busy. You know what I mean? A lot of people got a book, 14. That means you got a lot to say and you're serious about it. Yeah, it seems like Kev comes out with a book every year <laughs> or two <laughs> books a year, like, yeah. or three books even. Right. He stays writing. He stays writing because then even if it's not a book, it's like uh, lectures, editorials, um, you know what I mean? Essay submissions. All types of shit, man. It's impressive. Mm -hmm. Very impressive. Um, there's been so much stuff going on uh, and th this week. It's like, where do you even start and where do you begin and where does it end, man? Uh, people better get out there and vote, though. I say that because you got to participate, man. Even if you think it means nothing, I guess if, well, here's the thing. He said it right. Like, you could do what you want to do with your vote. We talked about this before on this show. If you don't want to vote, that's fine. Um, you got the right to do that because it's your vote. And you got a right to vote for whoever you want to. But I don't want this year to go by with results that come out. And I can't point to the idea that I did that. I put my two cent in. That's how I look at it. Sometimes your two cent is worth a lot. Sometimes it's not worth anything. If somebody needs a dollar and they got 98 cents and you got two cents, it means the world. Sometimes two cents just means something to you. And if it means something to you, it means something to me. Have you uh, voted yet or studied your ballot? I did vote. I voted like about uh, this weekend, Friday. Did Th you? Yeah. Fr th wait, Thursday? Friday? Friday. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm yep. going to study my ballot um, hopefully tomorrow. I had a full day today, so I didn't get a chance to. And I've been pretty much hearing about all the propositions. But people say, okay, it's one thing if you don't want to vote in the presidential election. Mm -hmm. But there, there's this thing called voting down ballot, meaning... Mm -hmm you know, up under the presidency. There's other ballads and propositions that mm -hmm. need to be supported or not. Mm -hmm. um, so The local stuff is so important to your life, to your everyday life, man, for real. Uh, you want to, you know, ignore the presidential part of it, you know, that's on you. But these little provisions that go on in your state and in your county and in your city, that little stuff is important, man. Some of it will affect you. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I got to study all mine. Um, I know so far I'm like, uh, yes, on 16, which is, uh, you know, for uh, to bring back um, affirmative action and, you know, certain rights for people of color, mm -hmm. um, discriminate discrimination. Mm -hmm. um, the well, it used to be in place, you know. Yeah. And about. 
I guess it's been about like 10 or 12 years now or yep. something. It, they basically eradicated it. And so, and that's one of those things that it just white got. White people were crying discrimination. Mm-hmm. And whites and a lot of Asians really pushed yep. that bill because of the UCs and the Cal States feeling like they couldn't get their kids into school and there were some spots that were given to blacks and they didn't earn it and all this stuff. And it was literally yeah, voted so yes out. Yes, on 16, right. for sure. Uh, um, the controversial one is 22. The Uber. Yeah, the Uber drivers. I, I'm leaning toward yes, because I think if they lose, it's going to be, you know, it's going to be hard to get an Uber and it's going to be higher probably. I feel they're like moving, they're probably going to move out of state too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The drivers, you mean? The uh, company. Oh, the company. Well, they can't afford the what the drivers want insurance. They want insurance. They want benefits of me, all sorts, and it would cost billions of dollars for them to really turn around and give that to. But on the other hand, that's not what that Uber started out as. That's what I say. You get. You, it, it's not a, a you could get a job go yeah. drive a taxi yeah but my thing is this it's yes, like Portis. that's not how uber started right the whole idea is you drive when you want to drive exactly you um it's a side as hustle an independent mm -hmm. person you have to pay your taxes mm -hmm. still i mean it's a choice mm -hmm. exactly and from what i understand they're doing some type of um insurance now that they've added to this yes on 22 whatever whatever but still like uber is what uber is like and all those other um app-based jobs or whatnot. right i would be pissed off if i was an uber driver able to go out there whenever i want to and and set my own hours and leave and turn the clock off whenever i want to and now all of a sudden i gotta be on the clock and you're gonna tell me my hours and all that stuff right man please that's why I'm yes on 22. I'll just say it. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm yes I'm on down. 22. I am down the with it. The one that I'm confused on is the dialysis thing. You know, they keep, I think it's 23. And they keep running those commercials if if I don't have dialysis. Oh, oh, I'm, like. I could die. I mean, it's sad, yeah. but like, wow, really? It's like the access to uh, dialysis clinics or yeah. something that a doctor has to be has to, I gotta exactly. get clear on what well that here's what like. it is you can go to a clinic now and just do your dialysis at a clinic certified mm -hmm. without a doctor being right there yeah and so what they're saying is no there needs to be a doctor at every clinic that's doing dialysis and that means hiring all these more doctors prices going up and everything like that so some people are like look the, the doctor diagnosed me but to get my treatment, I don't need them there. You know, right? If you know how to do it, if you're a technician or a clinician, yeah. you should. Yeah. Anyway, uh, we have a special guest on the phone. All right, all right. Coming up, uh, guest number two for tonight, my old school homie, who is um, entrenched deep into this hip hop culture, from uh, being a writer, an MC, a beat maker, uh, artist management. Managing festivals and every damn thing else we could think of. Give it up for my man Tim House. Hey, what up? What up? Hey, how y'all doing tonight? What up, man? How you doing, dog? Man, maintaining, you know, quarantining. Quarantining? <laughs> Are you quarantining, man? You keeping your distance? I mean, I'm trying to keep my distance, but. I can't say the same for everybody else that's out there. You know, like, you go to the stores, people try to get a little too close. Yeah. I'm already one of those people that's like, I need my space. But now that the whole quarantine stuff is happening, the social distancing, I'm like, yeah, I need a little bit more space. Yeah, 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 yeah. I already, I'm with you, man. I already need my space. I'd be like, back up, man. Especially if I'm at the ATM or something, I'll turn around and be like, hey, man, can you back up some steps? But now it's like mandatory because they got stickers on the ground. My motherfuckers can't read. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, we already know though, but it's good though. How can't you, read, man? don't read, right? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> man, what's up with um? So let's talk about some hip hop, man. One of the big things that um is happening 
uh, is the new season coming of these versus battles. You been following? Yeah, I peeped the uh, almost all of them. It's been like almost like twenty of them, I think. Yeah, it's been a gang of them. Uh, the one that's coming up, the next one is Ti versus. Um, Dang, what's homeboy's name? Um, 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 Ice Cream Man from Atlanta. Jeezy. Yeah, yeah, Jeezy. T.I. versus Jeezy. Snowman. I, Snowman. Yeah, I said Ice Cream Man. No, that's Master P is Ice Cream Man, huh? <laughs> see, see, now you got to put some respect on it because I'm, I'm calling from Oakland, California. So <laughs> the Ice Cream Man is, 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 is the loonies. Oh, the Ice Cream Man is the loonies? Yeah, Master P actually bit that from them. Really? The originals. Ooh, he bit that? I can yeah. believe it. Master P, he uh, started No Limit Records as a record store in Richmond, California, up here in the Bay. And then took a, took a lot of that game back down south, and voila. He took a lot of that game down south. Uh, okay, so really we're talking about the snowman. I don't know enough Jeezy music to think that he can even hang with T.I., um, but maybe some folks down south feel differently, man. What you think about that? I mean, it's... It, 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 it's kind of crazy because I think that folks do look at, at uh, in contemporary times, particularly these are both contemporary artists. Um, so Jeezy is, you know, he's more of a, a almost a pop star at this point. Damn, is he? I mean, I said almost, not quite there. Like yeah, the Ti, Ti, for for better or worse, probably is. You know, TV shows, movies. Um, Number one records, you know, big gigantic features. Yeah. On other people's records. So, you know, like I think Ti, like when it comes to the actual hits, and it's judged on that, then Ti got it. But when it comes to like, you know, stuff that's 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 more on the underground. Right. Then it comes even, huh? Yeah. <clears throat> he, he got a lot of those. Oh, he got a lot of that. What was you gonna say, Portis? I was going to say, too, yeah, I would consider Jeezy uh, kind of popular because he's on the reality shows, too. And True. can I just break in and say that the L.A. Dodgers just won the World Series? Hey, hey. For all the L.A. Dodgers. Man, fans. I have been like, man, baseball gives me like, I get nervous too much, man. It takes so long between pitches and between hits and everything is so crucial I can't watch a whole game, Sometimes man. Sometimes the games go like 13 hours, That's right? Right. Like, I cannot watch a full yeah, game no more. I can't either, but congratulations to the L.A. Dodgers. I was hearing gunshots just a minute ago, so. <laughs> Let's hope that's what Now it we is. know why. <laughs> yeah, that's a good thing. I'm, I'm wondering if, if, uh, if Magic Johnson, if, that, if he's the first black owner to win a championship in baseball. Gotta be, right? Well, it says, I I seen someone post, is Magic Johnson the first person in history to have both an NBA championship ring and a World Series ring? Mm. Is he? I don't know. Good question. Who else could it be? Well, I mean, there, there, there's got to be other owners. That own both? Yeah. No, for it, the it, Dodgers. He's not the sole owner. Oh, no, 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 no. Is that what you meant? Who, me? Nah, I, I'm just saying, like, just in, in, in terms of, like, you know, like, back in the day, dude, that used to, before Jer Jerry Buss, the other dude, Jack Kent Cook, he used to, he used to own both the, uh, the Kings and the Lakers. Okay. So true that. So somebody might have, but it's hard to get two titles. But if you own the Kings, because they got a couple titles. And the Lakers, so that's possible. Yeah, 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 yeah. I wonder if he's the first black man. He's got to be, though, because it it's not that many black owners, period. Bob Johnson ain't got no titles. Oh, he for sure he ain't getting <laughs> 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 he, not, he, ain't, he got title. He got BET titles. That's really about that. Um, you know, I was talking to one of my homies earlier, Willie Gly, uh, talking about Atlanta. You know, T.I. says he's the king of the South. He says, hey, man, T.I. ain't even the best rapper in Atlanta. Does he even make the top five? I was like, damn, not top five. So we started counting. When I ran down my top five, I don't know if I could even include him. What you think, Tim? Who you got? I mean, I'm starting with Andre 3000. He's got to have a title. 
Then I'm going to CeeLo for number two. Then I go back to Alcaza to, to Andre. You're giving CeeLo like uh, MC skill. I'm giving CeeLo number two rap skills. Yeah. From the South? All day from Atlanta. Oh, from Atlanta. Okay. But he said King of the South. So you got to, that means the South. Well, he claims King of the South. He didn't say King of Atlanta. Right, he he he's claiming a bigger cake, but right. So we but can't the homie's just like, saying like he's not even the king of Atlanta, let alone the South. Mm. Because if I'm gonna say the full South, then I gotta throw in Scarface, right? And um, shit, that's really the only other person yeah, I'm really UGK. throwing in there. UGK is not in um, my top five though. No. Because again, there's out there's Andre, and then there's Dre. Okay, so you said Andre, CeeLo, and then who else? I'm saying Dre from um, Outcast. Outcast. Okay, so that's three. That no, you said him twice. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Not Dre. Um, and why am I blanking out? The other dude. What's Homeboy's name? Big boy. Big boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm giving Big Boy number three. And then it starts to get fuzzy. I don't really know. There's like Future. There's Two Chains. There's Ludacris. There's yeah. Uh, there's a lot of Atlanta. I guess I could give it to T.I. You can get that you fourth can spot. Do, that would be a good battle with, uh, is Ludacris and T.I. Yeah. Versus. Yeah. Yeah, that seems like that's in line, right? I think Ludacris would win. Though. They did some movies. Ludacris no. has more. Lud- Luda, Luda did the battle with Nelly. Did he? Did he? Yeah. Did we miss that one? I must yeah, have missed I'm that. I must have missed that one. I know Nelly battled, but I thought he... Who did he... Damn, Nelly battled Ludacris? Oh, okay. How did that go? I didn't see that one. Yeah, I missed that one. It was cool. It was cool? Yeah. It was cool. It was It, it was. It was good. It, but, um, you know, it was already like... It was damn near a setup. Really? Yeah, because, cause, you know, Nelly... Got the hits, definitely got some hits, but he don't have them. He ain't have them features. Yeah, Nelly, man, come on, man, I'll give him about four hits. Tops. He probably got more. He's a great performer. I remember seeing him. I be- seen him on Dancing with the Stars last night. Oh shit! Really? Yeah. How would he do? <laughs> was he sashaying? He was a little stiff. Really? Yeah, but he was Freddy Krueger. They had the whole uh, Halloween thing. Nelly is on Dancing with the Stars, yeah. man. They uh, Dancing with the Stars, they consider that's the end of your career. Is that, right. is that true? Is that it? <laughs> when was this? Last night. He's on the current current season? Yeah. Oh, I might smoke one and, and watch this. Hey, man, check out some dance moves, yep, too. Yeah, he's on there. What is he? Doing like some waltz or square dancing. Uh, he did a routine. Yeah, I mean, he said river dance. (laughs) That's what they do on Dancing with the Stars. Ta 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 ta. I remember that fool Emmett Smith was on there. That nigga was putting his all into it too, man. He he was trying to be the best ever. <laughs> That's yeah. hard work, though. I I I know I would fuck up. Oh hell yeah! Come <laughs> on, don't make me have to throw your ass, cause then you fall, <laughs> you getting dropped. <laughs> yeah. If I gotta hold you up in the air, man, please, huh? My, my partner would be hitting the dirt. Man, um, okay, Tim. So you in the the Bay Area right now? What's let's talk about? Um, uh, what's, what's your Bay Area top five? That's going to be a hard one, huh? I mean, it, it, it's tough because, you know, I, I can't really put stuff into a a, a, a top five. My, my, if we're talking rap, mm-hmm. you know, like, bro, you know, shit. Like, Mike, we've known each other for, for 35 years. Hey, I want to see I, what your game is, man. Yeah, well, I, got too, I got too many. I got too, too much. Um, five. Five, bro. That that's 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 almost an insult to to my listening ship, listenership. <laughs> you know, like for the amount of rap that I've listened to. Everybody can't make the top five, man. You only could have five, dog. That's 
what I'm saying. Like, it's already hard enough for me to pick five, just five in general. But <clears throat> I'm going to say that, uh, okay. you know, 40 and short, you know, if I could have one, uh, one make one person, like, hieroglyphics, you know, if that, instead of a crew, just, you know, if I could just take slots. Because okay. So, a top five, you know, it's really like you're, you're asking me for, like, soloist versus groups. Well, hey, you know, you could throw your groups in there, but be, before you do that, let me just be clear. Are you putting 40 before short or short nah, before I 40? In, I can't put it in no order. Come on, man. Nah. Nah, <laughs> I can't do it. No order. And then you got to consider this. Is Pac a Bay Area artist? I, I mean, I, I I don't really can consider him. A Bay Area artist. Okay. But that's just me. You know, he definitely represented the Bay, but yeah. he also represented LA hella hard. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. I'm just testing you. I'm just testing you. Can I give my top five? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Give Show some bravery on this show, POTUS. I'm going to hit him with the same top two, E40, too short. Okay, I'm, but are I, you. I, I got to throw in. Uh, oh, but who are you saying first? Who got the number no one? no first. Man. Well, two, too short because he's the legend. The okay, so you get E-Rick short dog E-40. the first. Okay, yeah, so short dog E forty digital underground digital at the three. Uh, be legit. I love be legit from okay the click and uh the loonies. Oh, you giving that loony spot? Yeah, all right, I, I all give right. the loonies some love. Yeah. Oh shit! All right, yeah, I ain't mad. She said some items I didn't expect right there, Tim. But that means she really knows. But Portis is from the Bay, though, too. So she get to say it. I would oh, be... Wait a second. It's the Portis? Yeah. What up? That's what I, th- <laughs> I said hi to you. I don't know why you say, hey, yeah. Uh, <laughs> not right, not I, 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 I'm not even knowing. <laughs> What's up, Tim? <laughs> oh, you from Vallejo, right? No, my mom actually lives in Vallejo, but I lived in like East Palo Alto, and my dad lived in Oakland. So, okay. but um, I lived in San Francisco. I lived in so many places in the Bay, like so. Yeah, East Palo. Shout out to East Palo Alto. EPA. <laughs> EPA. Yeah, y'all got like names and shit. Yeah, no, that's the EPA. name of the city. That's where Stanford is. Stanford's in Palo Alto. Exactly. And there's an East Palo Alto. Yeah, you, and you, you will never get the two twisted. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You will be not confused. <laughs> I wouldn't even recognize East Palo Alto now. They bulldozed it down and built a whole new city for Silicon Valley. For so. real, though. High-ass yep. prices, too, to match. Yeah, it's, it's wild over there, you know, because Facebook is right down the street. Mm-hmm. They got a big-ass campus in Menlo Park, which is like basically like Menlo Park to EPA is Inglewood to L.A. It's, yeah. across, it's right across the street. Yeah. You know, so... <clears throat> Silicon Valley really done, done put they uh, put their foot in EPA's ass. All right, Tim. So you can't get out of it. You got three so far. Who else you got? Two more. Man, I got go with the same DU. But then, um, man, my favorite rap, my actual favorite rapper right now, man, it's a young dude and he's new. It's a dude named Offset Jim, and he from Oakland, but you know he brand new. Okay. That's just my favorite right now. Mm-hmm. You know, but it's but it's been so many, um, you know, so so much. I've, I've I've just eaten up so much of this, so much of the music here, man. It, what about like Mac Dre or Keek the Sneak? And I mean, the, those are givens. But you know, I, as much as I enjoy them, I'm 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 still enjoying Black Alicious and Zion I, and um, or the Front Line, or a new, this new crew called Grand National. Got they got Earth the Jerk in it. Uh, you know, Messy Mar, Mr. Fab. Like, it's Yay, a lot of shout out to Mr. Fab. Yeah, it's a lot of them that, you know, uh, the Jacker. Uh, Rapping Fote, Spice I mean, One. <laughs> it, it, it's so many. Rex Life Rise, uh, HBK Gang. You know, it's a. Mozzie. You know, what about uh, Dale the Funky Homo Sapien? Oh, you threw him with the high road, though, huh? I got, I'm putting him all, all with high road with souls and pep and cash. Okay, so we said Bay, but what about top L.A.? We said the South. What about okay. L.A.? <clears throat> Man, L.A., I mean, I, I, I start with number one, Ice Cube. 
Okay. Okay. No, I'll, I'll give him the number one slot. Okay. Okay. I'll, I'll go Ice Cube, uh, Kendrick. Uh, okay. You're doing a good start. I think I might be with you. Ice Cube, then Kendrick. You got to throw Snoop in there. Of course. But see, I, what I was thinking, I was thinking of just like, can I, I was going to ask, and I just say the dog pound. Oh, the dog pound? Like, like, oh, because like, you got to say corrupt. Over-encompassing. Like, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Put put all of them okay. in, that, in that slot. Okay. You know, um, and then, uh, and we just, you know, if we just talking about rappers, then, uh, the man, game. At this point, man, like in 2020, like I, now that I look back on things, man, Freestyle Fellowship. Okay. Okay. We had JMD in the house uh, a couple years ago. Um, hell yeah. Why not? Yeah. I mean, just, just in terms of like, uh, you know, they had a lot of influence. Mm-hmm. And they inspired a lot of cats, and mm-hmm. and they were probably the first cats from uh from out here to uh to go to the East Coast and be respected for straight up bars. And for, yeah, MCing, right? Yeah, just straight up MCing, you know. And then, you know, if I can get one extra, it would be, you know, actually two. It would be Quick and uh, CMW. Quick and CMW, man, I like those choices, man. I like those choices. I think my list has got to be interchangeable. I mean, it's the same items. I don't know what the what the order is. Um, the number one spitter is corrupt. But when you look at the whole thing, the rapper itself, see, then it, it once again, then comes in Pac. Where does Pac go? Because Pac really is a L.A. He really reps L.A. at the end of the day, you know. Does he not make your top five? If I had to choose uh, what pop repped, I would say the Bay Area out of the two. You 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 picking yeah. the Bay over LA? You yes. know what? I, I I would say the same thing because when he did when he was on you know like on the uh, on All Eyes on Me like California Love at the end and you know and some of the streets he was naming and places it was just like weird mm. like nah we don't, ain't nobody really there dude. You know, like that—that's not like a place to be in L.A. You know, but the uh, <laughs> what you talking about, Rosecrans? <laughs> yeah, I like uh, YG. Oh, YG is dope. Yeah, I like YG and uh, Schoolboy Q. Yeah, oh, I man. like those yeah, guys. Schoolboy Q was they, they actually they whole crew was tight. Yeah, they whole crew was too. tight. Yeah, J Rock is tight. The, and Abso. Yeah, exactly. So we got to get them their full crew like you did, Hyro and Dog Pound, basically. Yeah, TDE, or, or, or Black, Black Hippie is the name of their group. Yeah, Black Hippie. I got to throw the alcoholics in there somewhere. Ooh. Most deaf. Damn near forgot about the licks, man. Got to throw them in. Including King T. Yeah, including King T. And you can oh, throw that, Exhibit I mean, in it. Including Exhibit, too. Just yeah. go full liquid crew. Yeah. Montage one, we could let him fall up under that too. Yep, he's up in there. Build a ag, barbershop. Right. Defar eye. Are we putting Nip in here somewhere? Ooh. Where does Nip fall? We got to. But then you know, but see the thing is is like y'all y'all know as well as as, as I do, like we're doing cross generational too. Yeah, and, and, and the K Day era was like a whole nother era in itself. Right. You know, like the, when I say K Day era, I mean, I mean like the AM stereo era. Mm hmm. Oh, the I Greg know what you Mack, mean. Uh huh. Greg Mack and uh, <clears throat> Russ Parr and Brad Pye Jr., Lisa Canning. Bobby you know, Jimmy and the Critters. Yeah, the, the on air personalities <laughs> that, 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 we, that we woke up to and right. then we went to sleep to. Right. You know, and, and that whole thing, like, it shaped a lot of the culture in Los Angeles. Right. Well, where does Ice-T fall? Because really, Ice-T really, man, started the whole thing, as far as I'm concerned, for West Coast rap. Well, you, 
can't discount the, 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 the uh, like just the cultural significance of like you know Egyptian when, lover and all that. You mean? Well, I mean like with Ice T and Rhyme Syndicate, you know, they brought the Zulu Nation out here. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, the Zulu, and in turn, you know, like starting Water the Bush and United Nations, like for myself, you know, coming from South Central LA. We wasn't really like partying with white people like that, or right. la- or Latino people, or Asian people, Any- yep. people that just that wasn't black or was not directly in our community like yep. that. But <clears throat> that was like the first time that you know, with Water the Bush, that everybody started to come out. Water the Bush, Funky Jamaica, I mean Funky Reggae, um, oh. Alcoholic Jamaica Salad, Jamaica House, Jamaica House. Jamaica House. Um. Those were all the joints right there. Yeah, water the bush. Uh, what was it? Unity? Unity. Unity was, was big, more black though. That was oh. Unity. No. Unity was nothing but hip hop. That right. was like yeah. that was hip hop, and, and United Nations was like. What, what was the thing that went on at the Dragonfly? I think there was one. At, Dragonfly. Where was that? On Santa Monica. Oh, on Santa or Monica. Huh. One of them streets. I, I remember know. Funk Jungle, but that was it. Uh, that spot on like Western and Sunset, I think, or Santa Monica. Oh right, right. Sunset, oh, Sunset, like. No, where they had Water the Bush there too, for a couple times. You, I'm talk, I'm thinking of Santa Monica and Western though. Where's the one they have in Hollywood now, where Jimmy Kimmel Live is? Oh, that's, that's how that was Hollywood uh, Live. Hollywood Live. Yeah, yeah. That that, was, that's where that's where uh, they moved Water the Water the Bush started at that spot on I think <clears throat> Kawanga and Sunset. Oh, right, right you, over where Amoebas you, is. Yeah, right? yeah, 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 yeah. Right across the street, I can't remember the name of it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But I remember the first one because it was the uh, De La Soul Three Feet High and Rising release party. Aren't you special? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, they did Buddy on stage with the jam- with Q-Tip and the Jungle Brothers. Yep. Man. It was Dang. a remix version, so it wasn't no Queen Latifah, Moni Love, or nothing like that. But it was still, like, <clears throat> the native tongues at a very early stage. And then when it got a little bit bigger, they moved it to Hollywood Live, which was great for us because you knew, you knew we wasn't paying for shit at that I time. was getting ready to say, I got, I got right up in there. I had about yeah. three entry points up into that mug. Oh, man. It was too easy to sneak in there. Yeah, bro. too easy. <laughs> From and all types to, of angles. Bro, we used to get other people to come sneak in with us. Yeah. Uh, security, and so we would go to the side as soon as we got in, and they would go straight in, and security would grab them. Yeah. <laughs> kick them out, and we just swoop on in um, while security was busy fucking with the other guys and shit. Man, man I got a motto, man, about getting in events, man. Every club has a kitchen. <laughs> That's all you need to know. Find the kitchen and you can walk right in. Damn, Tim, look, man, we got to get out of here, though, man. We out of time already. I'm glad you called in to do a quick little hip-hop, you know, uh, discussion with us. Uh, When you come to L.A., though, man, I want you to come in the studio, man, so we can dig in, you know? Oh, for sure. For sure. Tell the people where they can find you, bro. Man, my IG is is, uh, Tim Heasy, T-I-M-H-E-E-Z-Y got a uh, twitter it's just my name but all one word just tim out straight through t-i-m-h-o-u-s-e and uh yeah if you on clubhouse i'm near too. <laughs> <laughs> clubhouse <laughs> all right cool man well look you guys thanks for joining mike robertson boulevard again on a tuesday make sure y'all vote y'all got one week to go next week uh, we will be talking about this election. It is my fourth year anniversary. Four years ago, my first show was on the night that Trump won. And we were all dumbfounded in that studio. This is King Mike Boogie on all my stuff. Follow me. Follow the POTUS as well, man. And we are out of here. Hey, oh man, I love that loveliness right there.